Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Coding Demos. In this video, you're going to learn how you can use the autocomplete text view inside your app. So, what is the autocomplete text view? So, according to the, the developer's documentation here, as I scroll down, it says it's an editable text view that shows completion suggestions automatically while the user is typing. Basically, the same thing that you see when you try to type something in the inside the uh, browser, right? So uh, let me show you the output of what you will be built in this tutorial. So I have my emulator here running and this is the app that we're going to build. So this app it includes the autocomplete text view and this is the one that's showing up right here. So when you type, uh, currently I'm using a list of uh, cakes, desserts. So as I type uh, C, that shows you the list of cakes, different kind of flavors that you can choose from. So this is autocomplete text view. So let's open up Android Studio and let's build this. All right, so this is Android Studio. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to add the autocomplete text view. To do that, open up the activity underscore main and scroll all the way a bit just to give some space and let's drag the auto text view, auto complete text view from the palette. So if you don't see it here, then just click on the search icon and just type auto complete text view. That's the first result. Copy that and just drag it into your uh, view here. So here we have the, uh, the auto complete text view. Let me just close this. All right. Okay. I'm going to remove this. We don't need that. Okay. So this is the text view. The first thing that we will start with is the something called the autocomplete threshold. It's something based on the documentation. This is the one. So Android completion threshold. So what this does is it defines the number of characters that the user must type before completion suggestions are displayed in the drop down menu. So if we refer back to our example again, this refers to the characters that you type in. So in this example, we used only one character. You can choose two, three, but by default it is one, but you can uh, set a different number. It could be two, it could be three. It is based on your requirements. For this example, we're going to go with just one character. So the moment the user types one character inside this autocomplete text view, then the list of the autocompletion will show up with a list of items that you have defined in your app. Okay, so go back to Android Studio and let's define that now. So Android and completion threshold, choose that and just put it an integer number. So I'm going to choose one. So one is if I type just a single character, then it will show up the list of uh, items. Okay, so that's one. In now we've set the completion threshold. Now this is the basic autocomplete text view. Now we need to go to the main activity here, the Java side, and we need to reference the ID of that uh, view. And uh, we'll do it as usual. So it's autocomplete text view. We'll give it a name. Uh, we'll just use the default one. And it's equal to the find view by ID. We refer to the ID that we've just set, which is the autocomplete text view. And that will semicolon. And then we need to set the adapter for the list of items. So this list of items, I have defined them inside the strings.xml file. So strings, this, uh, it's a list, it's an array item that contain the the Sweets items inside the array. So we're going to refer to this array inside the Java file. To do that, we need to use array adapter because array adapter is the one that holds the data of the items that will show up inside the, the autocomplete text field. So we'll do array adapter. It will be a type of string and we will give it a simple, let's say, array adapter as a name and then new array adapter. Here we need to first pass the first argument and that is the, the current context which is main activity.this and then 
we will choose a simple list for the drop down and we can use the one that is provided by android which is android.r.layout.simplelistitem1 and then we need to refer to the the items that were the string items from the strings.xml file so the string items is in type of string array so we do get resources dot get string array and then we'll just pass in the id of that array so r dot array dot suite and we'll funnel in that with semicolon so let me just put this in a new line all right so now we have the array adapter ready the final thing we can do is we can just connect this set this adapter to the autocomplete text view and we'll do autocomplete text view dot set adapter and we will pass the array adapter here okay so now we have the autocomplete and we have the the data that is populated by the array adapter inside the autocomplete text view now let's give this a run all right build is complete so we have the autocomplete text view just type the any letter so c because we have uh, c letter inside the string.xml file so it shows up the chocolate cake vanilla cake strawberry anything that starts with c so if we do with v then we have vanilla cake if we do with S, we have strawberry cake. If we have B, nothing. So it's, it's the first character of the first and the second item. So that's the, uh, the normal autocomplete text view. Now we need to improve that a bit. We need to do some sort of customization. And if we need to do a customization, we need to create a custom resource file. So to do that, I have already done so by going to resource, layout, and I have this uh, a custom layout file that is called layout underscore item underscore autocomplete. So I double click on that. And here, okay, let me just remove that. Okay, so here what we have, we have two views. We have the text view. This will sh uh, hold the, the item's name. And we have the view. The view here is... Uh, basically a horizontal line that separates the view items inside the list okay so we need to modify this text because we need to increase the text size and we need to increase so we need to change the style of the text to make it bold we'll do that now so android text size we'll set that to 24 sp and we'll do the android style text style and we'll choose bold okay this is the only thing that we need to change here we're done with this file we'll go back to main activity and you can see inside this array adapter currently we're referring to the built-in we're referring to the built-in uh, android resource file which is the simple list item one we will change this to the custom layout that we just did which is r dot layout layout dot layout underscore item is going to complete okay another thing that you need to do is you need to pass in the custom uh, text view that we just added because if you do this then there will be no text displayed inside the list since we are creating a custom list so we need to pass in the resource file of that item together with the item ID so the item ID that we want is the text view here and has the custom ID has an ID of that is called custom ID TV custom which is text view custom we'll go back to the main activity and we'll just refer to that here so it's android dot ID dot uh, custom text view text view custom alright so we have the custom layout and the its text view as well Okay, now let's run the app. Let's see how it looks like in the emulator. So run. Build is complete. So we have the app running here. Uh, we'll do the same thing. See, and we have uh, the custom resource file. We have a bigger text size with a text style set as bold. And it is separated by a horizontal line that it, that is set to the, uh, the current app uh, primary color. Okay, you can do another, another sort of customization whereby 
if we go back to the activity underscore main, the one that has the autocomplete text view, you can actually change the uh, change the background. So to do that, we'll do Android and then pop up theme. And here we'll choose, let's say, color accent. This will be set as the background. So it's pop-up theme. Let me just double check that in the documentation. Oh, sorry, it's pop-up background. Let me just copy this and go back to Android Studio. Okay, pop-up background. And this will be set to the accent color. Let's, let me show you that. Okay, so let me just type something. And we have the uh, background color. Okay, another thing I want to show you is, if you go back to the documentation again, you can actually do the Android drop-down selector. What this means is, the moment you click on an item, it has a, you can set a, sp a specific kind of color to the selected item. If you go back to Android Studio, let me just copy this. By default, if you go back to the emulator, and then you click on the item, then you can see this uh, normal default color for the selected item. We can change that. You go back to Android Studio, and inside the autocomplete text view, just paste that line here. Android, and we're going to call this, sorry, we need to ref uh, give it a color. So it says right here, it could be a color. All right, so we refer to the color from the Maybe colors.xml, sorry, colors.xml file, and that will be at color. We'll go with the something different, and let's build a run. All right, so build is complete. Now let's add something. Oops, sorry, let's copy. Okay, so when you click, you can see the color now change to the to the one that we've set in the drop down selector. Okay. So that is, that's the, uh, the functionality behind this line. Another thing that we can do is we can actually set a, a hint for this uh, drop down. So if you go back to the documentation again, and we have the first one, which is Android completion hint. It says defines the hint displayed in the drop down menu. To do that, we can go back to autocomplete and we'll paste that here and we'll give it a hint let's say choose a cake for simplicity okay let's build load one builds complete choose a cake and you can see at the bottom it says choose a cake that's the auto complete uh, sorry that's the the hint all right and you can do so many things right from this customization here you can change for example the width of the drop down the width, you can change the height, you can do so many stuff with it. So I'll leave you guys to uh, test out different kind of functionalities and you'll be able to customize it according to your needs. So this is basically it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and happy coding.